Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel S Chemistry. My name is Sonal and today's video is going to be something slightly different but again based on chemistry itself. So what I thought is that I have had the opportunity to attend various interviews in my life like not just with respect to the teaching interviews but also PhD interviews. I have also had the opportunity of having an interview at DRDU, at BARC and um, I have faced majorly questions in the field of inorganic chemistry. So and that's because uh, inorganic chemistry is my specialization. So I thought uh, why not make a video which sums up all the questions which I have faced in different interviews till date in one video. So that's what I'm going to do today. All the questions of inorganic chemistry, I am going to share with you guys the ones which I have faced for different interviews. So interviews are like ranging from a lecturer's position and assistant professor's position, uh, GRF position, PhD interviews, uh, but specifically in inorganic chemistry. And this video, I'm going to restrict to coordination chemistry because majorly, as and when I was asked for a preference, coordination chemistry has always been my choice. So in this video, I'm going to sum up the coordination chemistry questions which I have faced in my experience till date for all of the said interviews. So let's get started. So to start off with coordination chemistry, major questions I have faced till now are from the different theories. So obviously the start of coordination chemistry starts from Werner's uh, theory. So I have been uh, asked questions on the different theories, like the evolution of coordination chemistry. So starting with Werner's theory, then uh, VBT, valence bond theory, then uh, a few questions on MOT, crystal field theory, CFT, ligand field theory, LFT, and also in some rare cases, the tanabe sunago diagram. So these theories are a must uh, when it comes to coordination chemistry. And I have faced many questions, uh, specifically like, uh, what does a particular theory define and then what are the limitations or why was there a need to have another theory like all the collective parameters uh, you know uh, the, like parameters features and the limitations uh, examples pertaining to those particular uh, theories next part is like what exactly is coordination chemistry or what are complexes or coordinate compounds like what is a coordinate bond and then once you get a compound uh, or you get a complex how would you describe different parts of it like different sections of it like you have the metal you have the ligand then you have the primary valency then you have the secondary valency the coordination number the coordination sphere then the balancing cation the balancing anions the overall charge all of these questions which uh, ultimately give you the formation of a complex like how would you actually put a metal complex together like the central metal atom and all of the ligand arrangement around it so questions based on that uh, have been asked to me uh, previously the next is a very simple thing but can be complex as well and that is nomenclature now nomenclature is a simple thing because you just have to know the basic rules of it but it can get complex when you have different ligands uh, involved and that also brings me to another aspect of coordination chemistry uh, with respect to the ligands and that is dentist, uh, dentistry. So you have these like uh, bidentate ligands, uh, tridentate ligands and you know ambidentate ligands. So what is dentistry? I don't know why I'm saying it wrong. Uh, dentistry. What is dentistry? And then examples of different types of ligands under different classes and also ambident ligands like definition of ambient ligands and examples and then explaining like how the bonding takes place that is through which atom uh, the bonding is going to take place then another aspect is the magnetic movement aspect like uh, you know using hybridization how would you explain the magnetic behavior like uh, sp3 d2 d2 sp3 examples of complexes and whether they are paramagnetic or whether they're diamagnetic if they're paramagnetic if they're diamagnetic why are they so like presence of unpaired electrons and calculation of the magnetic movement using the formula like root of n into uh, n plus 2. So all of those things are uh, also like important here. And the next thing which is really really important and crucial are the splitting patterns. So on the basis of interactions between the ligands and the orbitals how the splitting pattern actually takes place like 
which of the orbitals are stabilized and which of them are destabilized in octahedral for example we have three orbitals which are lowered in energy and two orbitals which are uh, increased or they are raised in energy so how this stabilization or destabilization takes place what is the reason for it that's basically the interaction between the orbitals and the incoming ligands. So different uh, geometries, they have different types of interactions like octahedral is going to be different from tetrahedral, from square planar, trigonal, bipyramidal. All of these are going to have a different splitting pattern. And once the splitting pattern is done, the next thing is calculating your CFSE. Uh, that is your crystal field stabilization energy. So sometimes calculations are also asked like for a given uh, metal in a particular environment, what would be the value of CFSE? The next part, which uh, like I wasn't asked a lot of it, but again, I feel it is important and that is synergic bonding or like pi back bonding, which are the types of ligands which participate in synergic bonding and uh, like what are the aspect, aspects of it, you know, who's donating the electrons uh, and all of those little, little things. Like synergic bonding is a very small topic. You can just read through it. Uh, but yeah, you cannot really skip synergic bonding because it is crucial uh, in coordination chemistry. The topic is John Taylor distortion and uh, I have always loved the concept of John Taylor distortion. So what is John Taylor distortion? How does it take place? Uh, what are the examples wherein you will see John Taylor distortion? So questions pertaining to John Taylor distortion is uh, it's it's crucial when it comes to coordination chemistry and uh, also spinels like inverse spinels and you know uh, examples of different types of spinels. Uh, how is the structure like uh, the oxidation state so you know how uh, how the structure actually holds itself so spinels is also uh, one of the small topics uh, which is crucial when it comes to coordination chemistry then we also have factors uh, you know which uh, affect the delta o that is your splitting pattern uh, the splitting energy and uh, like how delta o is related to delta the tetrahedral energy value or the square planar energy value that is also a few like small small things in coordination and also you have uh, like the chelates right specifically edta because you know if it is like a lecturer's post and uh, for the bsc level then titrations uh, with respect to edta are very common so again over there like uh, what type of ligand is edta what is chelation why chelating ligands are like uh, you know they are more stable or chelates are more stable so all of these small small things in coordination chemistry uh, are sometimes asked in different interviews then we also have like the different transitions like dd transitions charge transfer transitions uh, and different examples of charge transfer transitions then also a question that uh, mnh206 uh, this particular complex mnh20622 plus why does it have a faint pink color like it's basically MN, uh, you know, it's a D5 system. So why does it have a faint pink color? So questions pertaining to this also, like different examples of charge transfer uh, transitions and DD transitions, uh, the forbidden DD transitions, then the rules governing DD transitions. And finally, the advanced level questions uh, are sometimes from the Nabe uh, Sugano diagrams. Like these are slightly advanced level. Uh, you majorly would have it for the master students, uh, not much for bachelors, but some colleges might have. So it's just, it's okay to go through these type of figures as well, right? So just the basic concept of the Nabe Sugano uh, diagrams, like what do they tell us? What is the information that we can gather from uh, such uh, figures? Yeah, and another thing I forgot in the magnetic uh, behavior, that is your spin crossover phenomenon. So that is also a little advanced level, but yeah, it can be something to, you know, just uh, have a look at. So yes, those are most of the questions I think which, uh, you know, I think which I have faced in different interviews, majorly uh, in coordination chemistry, but I have also faced questions on organometallic chemistry and uh, bio and organic chemistry. So I will try to make a video on those topics uh, uh, sometime ahead but i hope this video was helpful to you guys in case you all are preparing for an interview in inorganic chemistry and you want to strengthen your uh, coordination chemistry aspect and uh, this video is completely based on my experience obviously you can be asked anything else from coordination chemistry because coordination chemistry itself is such a vast topic but these are most of the questions which I have faced uh, till date in my different interviews. So thank you so much for watching. In case you guys did like the video, then give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys next time. Till then, take care of yourself and bye-bye.